The fact is there's exceptional policing being done every single day. We've seen departments organize community forums and panels and cookouts to bring officers together with civil rights leaders and activists and young people. Uh, many of you, I'm sure, saw the viral videos of police playing pickup basketball with kids or dancing the nene, which wasn't, you know, <laughs> that, that was a brave officer who did that. Um, there are a lot more examples, though, that don't find their way onto Twitter feeds. Of course, that's President Obama there giving one example of police getting to know the community they serve. And I was with Chief Roper just a couple of weeks ago when we were walking the community in East Birmingham and people were blowing their horns at you and some other 30 officers out there getting in the community and making sure that they know that community. And Mayor, let's go back to you and talk about how do we get to some of those solutions? We've got a, little short, a short time left here. Well, uh, Birmingham is at the forefront, as I mentioned earlier of trying to devise a national uh, uh, initiative, and we're part of the National Initiative for Community Trust and Justice, which they, they've taken six cities to look at what are the best practices in terms of building trust in the community, and then trying to implement those things in all police jurisdictions across the country. You know, as I sit here, you know, we have to open up our ears. Uh, we can't paint the black community with one broad brush to say they're all violent, uh, they, 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 they live in conditions that's not conducive for good citizenship, so forth and so on. But by the same token, we can't pick up that brush and paint all police officers saying, that, well, they start out in the morning when they put on that uniform and, and walk out the door, they're going out there to beat some heads. That's not true. Uh, the vast majority of officers want to go home in the evening time and have a peaceful shift. Uh, what we run into the problem is, and, and, and we fire police officers all the time, and, and we take them to justice, not a lot, but any time we find that out, the chief takes action and he informs me of what those actions are, and, and we have a process by which we go through that. But I think we've got to open up. Uh, uh, our, our police organizations can't just rile up every time somebody says, well, we need to take a look at what's going on. But by the same token, if something happens in Philadelphia, you can't automatically ascribe that to police officers in Birmingham or somewhere else. We got to open up the dialogue and, and, and work towards solutions and not just scream at each other. And right. then I do want to thank all of you for coming in, Mayor, especially you, because I know you yeah. had surgery and that's why you're wearing those sneakers. Yeah, I, I understand some, <laughs> some, some uh, people online are. That's a good cap of red, but it's because of my surgery <laughs> that I had on, not, not a fashion statement by any means. Absolutely. Let me ask you, Andrea, because we're talking solutions, and we mentioned the Civil Rights Institute and what you guys did, but you plan to have ongoing dialogue. The next one, August yes, 28th. Dialogue on August 28th, which is the anniversary of the March on Washington, and uh, we it, it, we're going to have an additional dialogue in September on the 15th, the anniversary of the bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church. On the 28th, we will be focusing on young people, and again, we've heard here how important that is. Many young people don't know the history, and when they know the history, both black and white youth need to understand how we got here and how we got to be the, in this in this predicament. And also, just to reiterate and parrot what uh, Reverend Forbes said when he was here on Saturday, these, uh, we, he has good news for tough times. We're in a very difficult period. America needs to have healing, but we can get beyond this. And Birmingham can be really a city of light in that regard. We've seen tough times in this town before. And we're not perfect. There are many issues, poverty, opportunity, education, health care. I could go on and yeah, on. Yeah. But we know that we can overcome those difficulties if we work together. We're, we're running out of time. Quickly, a solution. Carlos, quickly. Uh, so, so it's, it's pretty simple. simple. Uh, when we're, we're, we're talking, talking about the police, our police have to look like the communities in which they work. work. Uh, when you have officers that come from over the mountain uh, to go into to, 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 to a black neighborhood uh, that's never you know, had any kind of encounter with African Americans but want to police that community, that, of course, you know, disparities may, may be within that. So we have to have uh, officers that look like our communities and work and are from our communities to police our communities. And we know that FBI recruiting people of color to, to be a part of the ranks. You're actively wanting to increase the ranks of people who look like the, the people they serve. Police Chief Roper. So let me say, uh, referring back to Carlos' comment, uh, our police department is almost 70% African American. So we're doing well. We would like to do better. And so I would issue the challenge as we've always had. Come join us. 
Don't just stand there and criticize. Come join us and help us be a better organization. Uh, second, we are on the forefront of policing regarding building community trust and justice. And our violence reduction initiative actually is this police department going out trying to save the lives of young men. Okay. So Carlos needs to go with us like, like we were out there today, knocking on doors trying to save the lives of young men. I, I, think, I think Carlos would look good in blue before he runs for mayor. It would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. We want to thank all of our guests for joining us tonight to have this conversation on building better relationships with our communities. Our hope is that with this exercise, we have shown why having these conversations, as difficult as they are at times, is very crucial. That's right. And we hope you are encouraged to begin your own dialogues in your communities that you will seek a better understanding of your neighbors and that you will work with our peacekeepers to restore trust. We can't have uh, uh, chaos in the streets. We have to have order, but it has to be all of our uh, uh, responsibility, not just police officers, but people who live in the community as well. And the FBI, quite frankly, we're having some problems right now to increase our diversity rank. How can we continue to be part of the solution and not part of the problem? We're stewards of the history and we know what the negative consequences can be when communication and fear break down. And we have come a long way. So why aren't the citizens at the forefront of the discussion whenever we have an officer-involved shooting? So knowing a police department will call you when there's a problem. And I believe that all lives matter. Matter of fact, I just passed, passed right on saying that killing police officers would be a hate crime. But you You've got to treat people with respect. Get citizens to understand.